The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check please, people. It's all about licking your plate. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same <laughs> restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and we send the other two to go check them out and see what they think. This week, airplane mechanic and horse enthusiast, Lou Costura, swaps his toolkit for a saddle and gallops to his Redwood retreat. <laughs> yeah! With its roaring fire, relaxed atmosphere, and game menu, it's the perfect cabin hideaway. And sausage maker and consumer services manager, Helen Roberts, says that her pick has the perfect links for a great evening. It's the place to stuff yourself with family platters and has some of the biggest meatballs in town. But first, Marsha Kerwitt teaches Qigong and Tai Chi. She's mindful of the authentic ingredients <laughs> at her chosen restaurant. She says that a meal there transcends the dining experience at other places and transports her back to the city of the same name in China. The city and the restaurant are called Dalian. The city's in China, but the restaurant is on Shattuck in Berkeley. <laughs> Both my husband and I came from Dalian in northern China, and my husband was a chef in China for 10 years. And after we came to America, it was our dream to open the restaurant. And when we finally could do it, we named it Dalian. Dalian is a um, port city, so seafood is very popular. And also we use a lot of garlic in our food, and that's um, very flavorful. Freshness is very important to us, and plus my husband is a very experienced chef and strives to put out good recipe for the customer and good quality food. Chive and shrimp dumpling and sesame seed bread, those are very popular appetizers. And pickled cabbage with oyster soup is also very popular. In Dalian, in winter, there wasn't much vegetable a long time ago. So we pickle the cabbages, so we have some vegetable in winter to cook. And since I grew up with this flavor and dishes, I really like this and I wanted to bring this flavor to our restaurant. Now Marcia, you actually lived in Northeast China for a few years, didn't you? I did, from 85 to 87, and it was very different then than it is now. Mm -hmm. In those days, cabbages were in the market in October. September, October, huge mountains of them in the street, and people would take them home. Some people started pickling them, okay. and they had huge earthenware barrels that they would put the salt in, and some people just buried them in the ground because it got cold in the winter, you know, and they would dig them up periodically. Right. And a lot of a lot of vegetables were dried, so. But it's a coastal city, Dalian. It's so coastal and fish, seafood. That's mm -hmm. the. The big specialty, yeah. And did you find that uh, the restaurant itself in Berkeley brings that flavor, brings that feel? Oh, there are dishes there that remind me of dishes I had in people's homes when I was in China mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are not usual restaurant-type fare. Um, and what are some of your favorites when you go? Well, the, the first two of the chef's specialties, one is uh, a, a lamb and uh, pickled cabbage soup with noodles, and the second one is pickled cabbage with oysters and dofu. And both of those are, are just so amazing to me because the sour taste is very special right. and I really like it. And, um, and they do it so perfectly because it's not overwhelming. It brings out the other flavors in the dishes. Mm -hmm. um, so. And Helen, what did you have? I started off with the sizzling rice soup and I thought if, if you can make rice soup taste good, then I'm gonna like it here. But I was, I was blown away. 
I was blown away. It, it was like a live. It was like, when they say sizzling, I was like, okay, bring it on. And it was, it was buttery and just full of things. I had no idea what to call, but it was really good. And then what did you have after the soup? I did the crispy duck. Ah, mm, 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 mm. fabulous. I'm glad they caught that duck. It was really good. You enjoyed it. Mm. And um, Lou, you had the clay pot. Yeah, I ordered the seafood clay pot, and they brought this thing over, and I went, wow. There's this bowl that is just mounded with mm -hmm. seafood. Calamari, scallops, mussels, shrimp, huge, done to perfection. The sauce, bland. Ah, uh, interesting. Oh. I was kind of disappointed in the sauce. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be, a, you know, like a black bean sauce. Right. And usually with the black bean sauce, you feel a little, fer a little bit of that fermented, right. sour, vinegary, right. uh -huh. nothing, just right. bland. But the seafood itself the was fresh. The seafood was fresh. It was perfect. It was right. cooked perfect. Right. And a lot of it. My wife ordered the Kung Pao calamari, mm. which was outrageous. And to quote her, the best Kung Pao she's had in years. Uh. And there are some unique dishes, things like the sesame bread, which is a specialty mm -hmm. stuffed with onions and things like that, mm -hmm. that you might not find right. at other restaurants. And actually, I just want to hug her because I never <laughs> had, that was <laughs> the <laughs> best <laughs> Chinese food. Oh my God. That's great. I heard like the best Chinese food in Brooklyn. I'm like, yeah, right, okay. Mm -hmm. But it really was. I was just Although so maybe you couldn't get that close after this. There's a lot of garlic. In the dishes, but we, oh, <laughs> we, we all have had it, yeah. so that's it's all right. right. It's okay. Nothing wrong with lots of garlic. That's, that's right. right. Nothing. The wrong chive with that. and shrimp dumplings are so wonderful. They're boiled dumplings, and the skin is really thin. Mm -hmm. You know, they they do that really well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was recently well, remodeled, so there's a oh, nice yeah. clean yeah, look yeah. to the place. I never saw what it looked like, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they brought the food, and each dish was so mm. incredibly distinct, the flavors. I was just there in, in, the, in the food. I never looked around. I couldn't even tell you what color the walls are or anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is your restaurant. Yeah. Would you uh, sum it up for people? Well, to me, it's, um, it's, it's very real. And the food is always fresh, authentic. Um, and I, I've taken a lot of people there, and they always want to go back. So. I take that as a good testimony. Well, I think you found one here who yeah. really wants to go back. <laughs> Helen? Well, parking was terrible, but it was really worth it. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> it was really great. And Lou, did, would you go back? Did you feel like it was worth the money, worth the drive? It was worth the money. If I was in Berkeley, they did have a lot of stuff on the menu that sounded wonderful, mm -hmm. and I would try it again. Would I go back specifically to go there? Probably not. Mm -hmm to make a special trip to go there, an 80 mile round trip for me is not worth it. Right, right. Well, if you would like to try Dalian, it's on Shattuck in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-883-1883. It's open every day for dinner with lunch Monday through Saturday. Reservations are suggested and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Once settled in at his pick in the Redwood Grove at Kings Mountain, Lou likes to warm himself in front of the fire in preparation for the meal to come. He says it's one of the Bay Area's best kept secrets. It's on Skyline Boulevard in Woodside and it's called the Mountain House. The Mountain House has been in operation since the late 1920s. After a few name changes and different owners, the Mountain House was taken over by my wife Lorraine and I in the late 1980s and we've been operating it since. The menu's gone from casual dining into more of a fine dining with an emphasis on fresh fish and game items. Being on top of King's Mountain at 2,000 feet in the middle of the redwood trees, game items seemed like a natural fit for us. Buffalo and elk, ostrich and wild boar. We were able to enhance our menu along with the fresh fish and the other lighter fare that was already available. And that's what our clientele likes about us is the fact that they can come in and experience something new or some of their old favorites. 
a lot of our clientele come in different modes of transportation, which is interesting as well. It's not unusual to look out in the parking lot and see vintage cars or motorcycles, as well as horses tied up to the hitch rack out front. Life's stressful enough, and the Mountain House provides a place that's 20 minutes away from a lot of people on the peninsula or from the coast, and they come up here and they can relax in the redwood trees, have a great dinner, and uh, when they leave, they say, we'll see you next week, we'll see you next time, and uh, that's the reward. Okay, Lou, is it true? Do groups really come up riding on their uh, horses? And <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. As a matter <laughs> of fact. Is that you? Do you ride up on your horse? I have in the past. I haven't done it for a few years. Uh -huh. um, we went on a Saturday evening, and I was talking with the owner of the restaurant. He told me there was a group of 40 horses coming up on Sunday afternoon for lunch. Oh, so. that's great. And the Mountain House is a really historic place. I mean, started in the 1920s and uh, qu was, has quite a rich history. Yeah, it was built in the 20s mm -hmm. uh, from the old King's Ranch, mm -hmm. hence on top of King's Mountain. Right, sort of a getaway for wealthy San Franciscans yeah. of the day, right? Absolutely. All right, what is some of your favorite things? What are some of your favorite things to eat there when you go? Favorite things, I always order off the specialty board because it's different. It's not the same run-of-the-mill stuff. You go in, you have ostrich, you have buffalo, elk, venison, a lot of wild game. Right. And Jerry, the owner, chef, makes these fabulous sauces that go with them. Oh, and you can have some lovely alala berry wine, right? Uh, for dessert? <laughs> oh my God, that stuff is so decadent. For Bargetto, which for is Bargetto, a For Bargetto, absolutely. That's right, Down absolutely. Down in Santa Cruz. <laughs> now, ladies, this is a place with game. Mm. This oh. is a meat lover's paradise oh. here. Mm. I'm gonna start, I see you both sort of uh. waiting <laughs> in here. I'm gonna start with Helen. Oh, Let's go, okay. Helen. Well, Lou, I'm so happy that you like the specialty menu mm -hmm. because that looked the most exciting. The other menu was kind of boring. Oh, what did you have? Like, um, I started off with the what they call the Cajun popcorn shrimp, which mm -hmm. is I order it everywhere I see it on the menu, mm -hmm. so it's one of my, that's my gauge. Right. Well, let me tell you, the little rascals made it on that day. <laughs> it was, they came out, the shrimp came out the color of pecans. They were dark brown, and the Cajun sauce, which was mm -hmm. what they brought over was like orange marmalade. Mm. I said, well, mm. Cajun, I was expecting a little spicy. She said, baby, don't worry, I got you. She, she, she took the orange marmalade to the back and she mixed it with horseradish. <laughs> and she said, well, this should be hot enough. And I said, okay, <laughs> I think it's hot enough. But it wasn't, it wasn't what she liked. What else did you have? I had. Did, a, did well, you have any successful dishes? No. Oh. I didn't, honestly. I should have had the specialties on the board, the elk and the buffalo. Because the ones on the menu were kind of... That's unusual because I've never had a bad meal there. Uh, Ever. I've been going there since 1991. And Marsha? Well, there was no game the day I was there. Really? I called the night before. When I, whenever it was, I made the reservation. He says, oh, we're expecting a shipment in. And this was Friday afternoon or something. And by Saturday, they had buffalo, but it's grain-fed. I mean, it's farmed. It's not... Uh, wild game. And I was looking forward to the game. I really thought, wow, I would love to have something that would sound more exotic. Um, and overall, I was very disappointed in, in almost everything I had. And what else did you have? Well, um, we were three people. Mm -hmm. And I had, I ordered the simple dishes because I felt like I love when I go to a place and I order something simple and it's perfect. Right. You know, and then I say, oh, this, I'm in the right place. You right. know, I ordered the cream, uh, it was a pureed broccoli soup, which they sprinkle some cheddar cheese on. Mm -hmm. And the soup was totally bland. Mm -hmm. And the cheese had no flavor at all, except that when you dipped your spoon in, it, like these shreds <laughs> would just keep falling off and it was very made it difficult to eat. The other two people ordered the salads. They had, one had a Caesar salad and one had a, a um, like a charbroiled romaine salad mm -hmm. with a red pepper sauce. Those two salads were probably the best things on the whole menu. Ah, okay. And, um, mm -hmm. and I tasted their dishes too. They had the halibut and the salmon. And they were what you would expect them to be, but not 
They, right. they didn't seem remarkable to me. Well, and this place is really about atmosphere as well. I mean, yeah, we, the atmosphere. We've all, we always use it for our special place well, to go thing, for meals. If you're sitting at the fireplace, that's in the bar, so you're pretty warmed there's, up. There's, there's one right in the time. living room also. Oh, was yeah. it? I say living room because I always feel at home there, oh, and I that's love, how they make I you feel. I love the fireplace area, too. Mm -hmm. I would go back for that. Right, and just to sit at the bar. Yeah, because okay. it's real homey. And there's the outdoor patio yeah. where mm -hmm. you can sit there year-round. It's all glassed mm -hmm. in, and you can be sitting in the redwoods while you're having dinner. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I felt special sitting out there. It was right. really nice. Right, right. The Very staff friendly. is phenomenal. One of the things that really impressed me years ago, my wife and I have a favorite server that we always request. Mm -hmm. He remembered my drink after not being in there for almost a year. He reads the specials. He makes everything sound so delectable. I think he could make ice cubes <laughs> sound good to Eskimo. <laughs> yeah. The first I'm time I had the ostrich there, I was like, yeah. this is just uh. unbelievable. And uh, dessert, panna cotta? Uh. Oh, oh I yeah, you yeah, know. <laughs> I well, said I can't wait to see who did you go to the same who recommended this restaurant. It had balsamic wait. strawberries. It was served with balsamic strawberries. Mm -hmm. That was the reason I ordered it. Mm -hmm. Was because I had never thought of putting vinegar on on fruit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, the panna cotta. I have to tell you that I tasted that first by itself, and it was like vanilla pudding out of the box. Oh boy. It was mm -hmm. gelatin. Mm -hmm. It just held its own, mm -hmm. and it just didn't seem. I thought it was made with cream. <laughs> you know, and it didn't seem to have any of the richness. But when I actually ate, put the strawberry on the spoon with the panna cotta, that that tasted okay. Right. Was but your plate empty at the end of the? <laughs> we finished it. All? it. <laughs> we finished it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a clean the plate kind of gal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right. <laughs> all right, Lou. Defend your restaurant here. Tell people why they need to to make the trek to uh, to Woodside to do this. To Woodside, rustic elegance. It's a place to get away. It's away from the city. It's away from the hustle bustle. You're up in the redwoods. It's relaxing. It's quality food, decent price, and impeccable service. All right. Now, the Mountain House, would you go back? Well, you're going to go back with him, right? <laughs> I'd better go back. I want that type of treatment. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I'd call first and find out what was on the menu that night. Mm -hmm. If they had game, I would possibly go back. It was an hour mm -hmm. trip um, to get there, so mm -hmm. it would have to be <laughs> right. something very enticing for me. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. We'll see, you guys. The fog. we'll see you guys back there again, I'm sure. <laughs> if you would like to try the Mountain House, it's on Skyline in Woodside. The telephone number is 650-851-8541. It's open Wednesday through Sunday for dinner, with the bar open on Sunday afternoons. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $50. There's lots more than just sausages at Helen's Pick, and it's all served family style. It's casual, with walls covered in everything Italian. She calls it an amusement park for diners. It's on Howard in San Francisco, and it's called Buca di Beppo. <laughs> Here at Buca di Beppo, we don't have general managers. I am what's called a Paisano partner, and in Italy, uh, Paisano isn't necessarily uh, a blood relative but he's a neighborhood friend, and somebody who cares deeply about their neighborhood along with the restaurant. We go above and beyond to ensure that every guest has a remarkable experience from the moment they walk in the front door to the moment that they are saying goodbye. So the food here at Buca de Beppo is made fresh daily, from our mother sauces, be it the slow-cooked marinara, to our hand-rolled meatballs. Uh, everything is made very fresh. Our fish is only the freshest brought in every single day. Everything here at Buca de Beppo uh, is meant to be shared. So go ahead and order the large fettuccine supremo. Go ahead and order the large chicken salt and boca. We serve everything family style where you're going to get a sampling of a multitude of dishes. 
This is what sets us apart from the rest of uh, your run-of-the-mill restaurants and what keeps us very unique and extremely fun. All right, Helen, I can see you're kind of a party girl, aren't you? This is kind of a lively place. Mm -hmm. And, and right. uh, is it the atmosphere or the food that you like better here? Okay, it's the atmosphere. Uh -huh. Because I felt like if, if my family had a restaurant, it would be like Buka. There'd be a little bit of all of us in there. Right. My sister would have that part. She'd have the music loud, and I'd have the artwork going, and I'd work on some of the meatballs and all that kind of stuff. It would be like a family affair. And for me, when you go to Buka, you have to take people that you enjoy being with. Right because it's all about the whole atmosphere. It's not fine dining, it's good dining and a good time. And I can stay home and have a good meal, but when I go out, I want the whole package to be right. great. I want great fun, great food, great laughs, great wine, you know, <laughs> just a great time. So and Uka, that's what you get Uka there. does it for me. When you walk in, it's kind of like everything is, the walls, it's like a madhouse. Right. And somehow I'm comfortable there. And and did you like it, Marsha? I loved it. You did? I oh, went online okay. before I went and I saw it was a chain. Ninety three restaurants oh, across the I country. I thought, oh my, you know, like a chain. I had a very uh, low expectations. I will tell you, standing on Howard Street in the wind blowing and the aroma coming out of the doors. I mean, the doors were closed and I could smell the sauces. It was incredible. And we went in and I loved it. I just and loved it. And what did it. you have? What did I have? We could only eat two dishes. <laughs> well, they're about the size of this table, each oh platter. Well, they, they give you small. a small That's option. That's the small, you're right. The small option right. was, we couldn't even finish the Caesar salad. And then, and we're good eaters. <laughs> and then we had the baked ravioli, which was perfect. They were nice and big, and the, so the proportion of filling to pasta was just right. The sauce was amazing. I mean, I was eating sauce by itself. Um, I went with only one person, a big flaw. I mean, you yeah. should go with That's at least right. 10 That's of your, your right. 10 best friends or something. And I, it is a party place. Oh, I mean, yeah. it is a spot for big groups and gatherings. Yeah. And Lou's yeah. over here. He's uh, going, let me talk, let me talk. <laughs> All right, get in there. Buca de Bell but what did you think? Terrible time. Uh -huh. Oh, what happened? We, we, what we, happened? Went, for, we went for lunch. Okay. We didn't do dinner. Mm. Right. I went with a couple companions from work. Mm. We walked in the place, nobody even to be seen. Right. And you sorry, it's a small little, it's a small a little, little area. Yeah. You have to kind of go upstairs and down. Nobody to be seen. Right. Okay, and I'll tell you what. The hostess comes up. She says, well, table or booth. We specify table. Mm -hmm. She spends five minutes on the computer <laughs> to find us a table. In an empty room in an empty room <laughs> to seat us in a booth. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, maybe she spoke Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't have the book experience at all. Oh, wow. All right, what was the food that, was that, that disappointed food, you? We ordered the fried calamari. Uh, one of my buddies mm -hmm. had never eaten calamari. Born and raised in San Francisco, had never eaten calamari. Right. And even the lunch menu says appetizer to share. Right. I was expecting this huge, because I've heard of Bukas serving these mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. plates. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There was about 10 calamari <laughs> rings on a plate that were so greasy you could have rang them out oh. and overcooked. Oh. I, right. And I told him, I said, this is not how calamari no, is no, supposed to be. Now what about the meatballs and spaghetti though? Come on. His spaghetti was dry. Mm -hmm. It wasn't meatballs, it was meatball. <laughs> one meatball. It what wasn't meat, half a pound. One meatball. No, it wasn't as huge as everybody what says. <laughs> what city was your buka in? Yeah. I went to yours. Yeah. Oh, because you say the meatballs are your husband's favorite, right? The meatballs are like a meat to ball. <laughs> <laughs> they are. You're doing like this, and I'm going. Where was he? I was like here. And my other buddy ordered the salmon, right? Which was this little tiny piece huh. of salmon. Huh. And I'm going. They didn't have a okay. diet delight section on this, oh, this on this, this menu. You're after me again, aren't you? <laughs> 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 that's special right there. There was Italian music playing in the See? background, which was great. I have never heard music because I've always gone when it was so full of people. Mm. They have music there. Well, and let's talk about that because it is a loud place. Right. Very let's loud. face it, it's very loud. Have music either. Right. It's it's very right. loud, so you have to be used to that. But most mm. tables are full of people having parties mm. and right. and yeah, uh, drinking quite extensively. There were 50 <laughs> high school graduates oh, having boy. a party when yeah. we were there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to get there in the evenings. You have to try for dinner. I think after, you, after, see, the, after the experience, experience I had. So <laughs> you didn't have an experience. It's just you and yeah. your friend. Two friends. Yeah. But that's not an intimate place. It's not, you know, it's not really for the smaller 
the right. You need a party. Well, I I thought it was fabulous. Oh, good. I was. I can't wait for there to be an occasion when there's a bunch of people I'll to go, go with back. You. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mind spending money when when it meets my standards. Let's right. say you know. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I just loved it. I loved the whole experience. The <clears throat> the decor, the service. I felt the people who work there are just. They work so hard. They are carrying such heavy loads around. Up and down stairs. Oh, oh yeah, the three stair master, right. 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 Oh. right. And um and everybody's just has this wonderful demeanor and right. people are so kind and nice and <laughs> <you know. Right. laughs> Well, I'm gonna ask you to quickly summarize it for people who, who think they wanna go to Buca de Beppo. Bring, bring a big group or not. Well, I, I think you should go to Buca to have a good time and that's what you'll get. All right, Marsha. Oh, it's fun. You know, and the f the, my experience with the food was like, everything was perfect. Okay. <laughs> and now we can, for the op opposing opinion over here. Once was enough for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, if you would like to try Buca di Beppo, it's on Howard between 4th and 5th in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-543-7673. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. Well, I have to thank my guests on this week's show. You guys were great. It's a little controversial, but wonderful. <laughs> Marsha Kerwitt, Lou Costura, and Helen Roberts. Marsha's restaurant, Dalian, reflects the same food that she enjoyed in northern China. Lou thought it average, although he would give it another chance. Helen, however, loved it and can't wait to go again. Next, Lou's restaurant, The Mountain House, boasted great service and an eclectic menu serving game with great sauces. Marsha loved the setting, but thought the food so-so. And Helen felt that the next time she'd drop in, it would be for drinks at the bar. Helen's pick of Buca di Beppo disappointed Lou, who visited for lunch and felt the food lacked sauce and flavor. And Marsha had a fabulous time. She loved it all. Well, that's it for another show. And don't forget to visit our website, where you can view this and all the shows online or download to podcast. And remember the KQED Wine Club. You can find great discounts on international wines, recipes, and a lot more if you go to kqed.org slash wine club. So check it out. Join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers. Woohoo. Cheers. This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease.